So we are here for church building. There is a popular pastor, you're going to see him soon, that believes that the church building is a waste of resources. <laughs> Your mother says, if you have been following me, yeah, I keep saying this. A church is not the, the building you see you. It's out of, um, is it greed? Out of the love of money. There are many so-called custodian of God, the word of God, force you. Make you feel like if you don't go to a building, a four walls, a building, you, have not, you are not a Christian. You are not serving a God. You are not worshipping a God. You are not a good person. So they, look, they, they make people look at those who don't go to buildings as bad people, as demons, as devils. So that is it. And they want you to always frequent that building. And the more you frequent the building, the more they ask you to pay money. To pay money to maintain the building. So you are paying money to maintain building. You maintain the one who is keeping the building and his family. You maintain, you pay money to, oh, you, of course, you pay tithes. That one now has become a rule. If you don't pay tithes, you are going to hellfire. A lot of preachers preach that thing now. The church is a community of people, of faithfuls. It's never a building. It's never a full world. But everything has changed because people now look at it's a source of income for many people. A lot of people have become pastors now. They have seen vision and seen that God has ordained them. And they wake up, pastor has started. And the gullible one, I don't know what is wrong with Africans. I don't know. And you see people there. People shouting, Amen. You will never suffer, Amen. All right? You will have uh, your neighbors will come and be begging you, you say, Amen. You are praying so that your neighbor don't have food. But you, you will have and they will come and be begging you. What kind of prayer is that? So, I want to take you to it. Then we take it off from there. Because sometimes this is laughable. I tell you, like, this is laughable. And I asked, where is our common sense? I have been asking and I'll keep asking. If you watch the other video, we talk about the council of... Um, uh, what you, of chastedom, at least you have an idea of what we're talking about, right? So where do we keep this common sense? Even when people are struggling to pull out from the hold of colonialism, to pull out from this whole ideas that the white man has put in our head, a lot of people are refusing to, to be pulled out. A lot of people are okay with the illusion. They are okay with the false teaching. And they look at you like you are the one who is giving the false teaching and not them. The word church for me was a building. Abby? Huh? Huh? And for many people today, the word church is a building. That's why people will spend a lot of money to build a physical building and call it church. Meanwhile, God has never lived there. God has never lived there. You know, with the knowledge I have now, if I were to build a church again, I won't build. I won't build a church. With the knowledge I have now, if we are to rewind the clock of time, I won't build this. I'll build a shopping mall. Rent out all the shops. Make money. Put a conference room inside. Make money. Then church will use it once a week. If I was to reverse the clock of time, because this building is a waste. We only gather here on Sunday. Monday to Saturday is empty. Nobody is using the space. We could have been making money here all the week long. And on Sunday, we, make, we use it for five hours and rent it out the rest of the day, still making money. And then we use the money for television broadcast. We use the money for radio broadcast to push the message to the people that Jesus wants to live inside. Because he's not living here. Jesus is not living inside this building. Jesus only came into this building when we came. When we live now, Jesus is out of this place. I, I feel like I'm teaching here. Why are you looking at me like that? <laughs> so 
Somebody said, don't break that table. Not only break, I will burn it to ashes. <laughs> he doesn't live in buildings. He doesn't live in buildings. He, for the first 1,000 years of the church, go and study church history, there was no building called church. For the first 1,000 years of church. So, buildings called church are our innovations. Because from the book of Acts, right to 1,000 years of the church of Jesus on earth, nobody owned a building called church. They went to the synagogues. They went to the temple, which were public spaces like town hall. Like town hall. They met there on Saturdays. And after that, they left. And the synagogue was used for other things. Have you not read where Jesus came and they were buying and selling inside? So that means the synagogues were used for buying and selling when it was not Sabbath. So why did Jesus drive them? Because he was teaching a lesson. He drove them to say, look, a place called the church is not a place for merchandise. Buy bango. Buy olive oil. Buy holy water. Buy holy salt. Buy holy rice. Dr. Gabriel, is it not me and you that went to Uganda? They told us that their church is selling holy tomatoes, holy rice. If you buy any rice in that town that is not from that church, it's not holy. So everybody is buying holy rice in bags, holy tomatoes in bags, business center in Uganda. My house shall be called a house of prayer for all nations, but you have turned it into a den of thieves, a place of merchandise. I'm teaching good. <clears throat> So we, we used to think that the church is a building. So somewhere in your mind, you may not really know what the ecclesia is. And you know most of us, what we, what, what we have are the things we used to know. And it's difficult not to know them again because they've been long established in our minds. Just like the yellow book of Jehovah wickedness. Many of you, till tomorrow, you see the pictures of Adam and Eve with a red apple. Uh, eh? And a snake that is standing to talk. You see, uh, you know, uh, how Moses broke the Ten Commandments. All in that book. Teaching good. And so for some of us, that formed our theology. So when Abel Damina says, there was no tree and no eating in the garden. Yeah. Jehovah witness picture. Comes back to your mind. You say, Damina, heresy. Oh my goodness. Indoctrination, your majesties. We were indoctrinated. And so it was difficult to pull that. Like I tell you, it was a hard thing for me. And that's why when I get some comments, I see some of you make comments. Uh, I can't help it, but just I keep laughing. Some <laughs> no, your majesties. I smile at some comment, and I'm like, the time of this one is not come. So when the time comes, maybe he or she will look for me, or he or she will look for this video. Because when the time comes, nothing stops it. But if it's not a time for you, it's not a time. So the, 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 that building now has become a, a business center, like he said. Imagine, holy tomatoes. Holy tomatoes, holy rice. <laughs> I'm sorry. I have to laugh because what have we done to ourselves? What have we done to ourselves? Yes, they did something to our reasoning. They forced us into diverting our reasoning. They, they, like, they, 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 they hung on our necks and made it impossible for us to reason from that council of chastity. And they said, if you reason for yourself, if you think for yourself is a sin, and you are going to hell for that. So that fear of hellfire burning in hell is that chain that was on our neck and hold us so tight that we never thought for ourselves. We never thought for ourselves. But these holy tomatoes, holy rice, come on. I think we, we are beings that should be more than this. 
They go and buy rice and come and say they pray on it and it's a holy rice. And before you buy that rice, you are buying that rice times 10 of the price of the, of the normal price of that rice in the market. They go and make some handkerchiefs and put their faces on it. Every year they print a new year resolution. Uh, this year is my year of transformation of progress. My year of what, what, what. And they sell it to you. With, like the prices of this thing, sometimes you're like, what is happening? They bring some salt to you and say it's a blessed salt. You have to pay how many thousand for it. They bring water. It's a blessed water. You pay how many thousand for it. And this is how these people are making their money. It's a business center. A lot who still don't want to hear. The creator, that God, the God that all of you are looking for, has never lived in a church building. You heard it from him. <laughs> now, this, this is similar to what the books that were removed from the bible talk about like i said it from the gospel of um i don't know you might have come across that video now most of the books that are removed have something in common they always tell you there's no god outside the god you seek is you and so will openly tell you that you are that god that you are seeking with they'll openly give it to you now that God has never lived in a building, but that God is inside of you. It's not in a building, it's in a you, in you. He's living and breathing in you. And that's why you will not see a God in your hand coming out from the sky because all of us, we, 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 we grew up to believe that there is a God up there in that sky, in that heaven. You will never see a hand of that God coming out and fetching water and giving to somebody that is thirsty. It's you that go to do it. Because that God is residing in you. There's no God outside. It is you that help other people because that God is in you and uses you. He's not outside. He's inside of you. Until we realize this, we are still indoctrinated. A lot of pictures are in our head when you talk about God. A lot of things are in our head when you talk about uh, the, the creation of the universe. Like you heard him say, this is indoctrination. They create an idea. They, 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 you know, they promulgate the idea and they force it on everybody and you have to believe it because that's the way if you don't believe it you are doing something else we are all a majority majority are still indoctrinated even those who feel that they've known they've known to some level they are still indoctrinated it's difficult it's difficult your mother still as for someone who had studied theology to a level and sat one day and you know go through everything and when the realization started for me it was difficult like i said it's difficult because it would be like are you an, are you not a devil so i'm not a devil so I'm, I'm going to hell because now i'm not believing that thing again that i was taught that thing i was teaching people i'm not following that thing again so <laughs> You don't want to go through this, your majesties. You don't want to go through this. It's easier for you when you never, you were never a custodian of some of these theologies. It's easier for you. But when you are a custodian of some of these theologies, and you even see people who you have taught. <laughs> I taught catechism for a long time. I taught most of these indoctrinations for a long time. And this is me today. And that's why it's a bit... It was so, so difficult from the beginning, but the moment I allowed myself, your majesties, everything became clear to me. Everything became clear to me in the sense that I now know the reason why they say that is like that. I now know the reason why they act that way. <laughs> I just hope that um, we see the world for what it is and um, we understand what we should understand as a people. And we also realize that um, that God we seek is inside of you and inside of me. And we can be good people at the, pro as, at the process of that realization. We become good people. Because when you keep thinking that there's a God outside, then you feel like there's nothing good that can come out of you because there's no God residing in you. But when you believe that that God is in you, then you become the hand, the leg, the eyes of that God that is in you to do good to fellow human beings and the world will become a better place. 
What do you think? Leave your comments and thought the other section. And I will see you in my next one. Until then, love yourself, love others, stay safe, stay positive, always your majesties. Bye for now.